<coughs> this video shows the labor unrest in a certain industrial area. Our today's case is based on labor unrest. Our case is Stealth Carbide Private Limited versus Union, where a union leader files a case against the company, and the story will unfold as the drama begins. All right, the judge of the court is now in the session. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Calling the case, the Still Carbide versus the Union. Are both the sides ready? Ready for the Union, Your Honor. Ready for the defense, Your Honor. Your Honor, the case being discussed here today is of great significance to revive the peace that has been lost due to recent events. The hardcore capitalist mindset of Still Carbide Private Limited has not only harmed the workers of their company, but have also harmed the workers of other companies as well. To present this case in detail, I request my client, Mr. Shamdas, to come to the witness box. Permission granted. Is Mr. Shamdas present? Please come to the witness box. Raise your right hand. Do you promise that the testimony you shall give in the case before this court shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Your Honor, my name is Shyam Das. I am the leader of trade union named Satya Union. Three of my members working with Steel Carbide for no important reason was suspended on 11th November 2017 by the management on the ground of negligence that they forgot to close the hatch of the outlet which merely any of the workers in the organization would have done. Collective bargaining was also done, but it was of no use because a mutual agreement was not there. My Lord, I require, uh, I would like to bring to the notice that these believers, these workers are daily wage earners and the sudden suspensions will lead them to the male uh, starvation. I request the court to give them justice and reinstate them without penalty. Your Honor, these are the relevant documents, the suspension order and a detailed report of collective bargaining done. I submit it for your kind reference. Thank you, Mr. Shamdas. Defense may present their case. Your Honor, my client, Still Carbide Private Limited, under the law is presumed to be innocent until proven guilty. During this trial, you will hear no real evidence against my client. You will come to know the truth. The arguments made by Mr. Shamdas are half true. The suspension made here is no doubt on solid, important, and undeniably valid grounds. I would request you to kindly grant me the permission to call Mr. Raj, CEO of Still Carbide Private Limited to the witness box to gain more clarity on this matter. Permission granted. Is Mr. Raj present? Please come to the witness box. Raise your right hand. Do you promise that the testimony you shall give in the case before this court shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. So, Mr. Raj. You have been the CEO of Stealth Carbide since how many years? Three years. Okay. So you must be very well aware about the rules, regulations and policies of the company? Yes. As Mr. Shamda said, did you suspend three workers from your company? Yes. Can I know on what grounds? As the gas outlet was kept open, which was to be closed after the working hours. All right. But then why only these workers? I mean, any of them could have closed the hatch. Your Honor, I as a big organization, where thousands of workers are working, and each of the workers are assigned a job to be done. But these three workers were responsible to close the hatch, which was not done, and about the gases was explained before. That's all, Your Honor. Your witness, please. So, Mr. Raj, you have been associated with uh, Still Carbide Private Limited as CEO for three years, right? Yes. 
good so you must be very well aware of the standing orders of the company yes so tell me the reasons on the grounds of which you have suspended these workers are they present in the standing orders and you do realize right that if these reasons are not present in the standing orders of the company then the suspension is not applicable your honor these are the copies of standing orders issued by still carbide Ka private limited i submit it for your kind reference objection my lord the workers in question here did not keep any ordinary gas outlet open but they had kept open the outlet of methane gas which in high concentration may restrict the supply of oxygen causing suffocation and loss of consciousness which can put the lives of many people in danger just because it is not mentioned in the standing orders does not mean that it can be done objection sustained you may go now mr rash your honor I request your permission to call one of the workers of Still Carbide Private Limited, Mr. Chandulat, to the witness box. Permission granted. Is Mr. Chandulat present? Please come to the witness box. Raise your right hand. Do you promise that the testimony you shall give in the case before this court shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. So, Mr. Chandulal, you work for Still Carbide Private Limited, right? Yes. And are you aware of the recent tragedy, gas tragedy, which has occurred around in and around your industrial area? Yes. So, after this, did you ask your management to provide uh, some for some extra safety measures and all? Yes. What were that measures? Can you please tell the court? We were provide uh, given the training and the safety gears, but our residential areas. But still not secure. Point to be noted, my lord. Their residential areas were still not secure. This shows how careless the management of Still Carbide Private Limited is. Thank you, Mr. Chandulal. Your witness, please. Your Honor, I would like to call Mr. Arun Bora, HR Manager of Still Carbide, to the witness box. Permission granted. Is Mr. Arun Bora present? Please come to the witness box. Raise your right hand. Do you promise that the testimony you shall give in the case before this court shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Okay, Mr. Arun, you have been associated with Still Carbide since how many years? It was two years. Okay, then tell the court what were the precautionary measures taken by the company after a similar gas tragedy occurred in the nearby industrial area. The worker were given training regarding the same and safety gears were also provided. Then what about the residential areas? Uh, residential area is being shifted as it is a colony, so it is taking time. We have the, pa uh, we have the paper to support this which shows our residential area is <coughs> our residential area is working on happening. My Lord, the documents have been submitted here for your reference. Thank you, Mr. Arun. Your Honor, I would like to call Mr. Shyamdas once again to the witness box. Mr. Shyamdas, please come to the witness box. <laughs> Mr. Shyamdas, was there any objection from the management when you established a registered trade union? No. Okay. So after the collective bargaining, when the demands were not met, <coughs> on which date was the strike conducted? On 11th November 2017. And when did the collective bargaining end? On 10th November. Point to be noted, my lord. According to Section 22 of Industrial Disputes Act 1947, no person employed in a public utility service shall go on a strike without giving prior notice of this strike to the employer within six weeks before striking. Objection, my lord. My client here is an unskilled labor. He does not have any idea about the provisions of the law. Miss Sanami, when it comes to the law, ignorance is not to be considered as innocent. My lord. Objection overruled. My lord, in this case, Mr. Shamdas 
was not ignorant about this provision. He was very well aware of the consequences and we have the evidence to prove this. We have the video clip which shows the collective bargaining which took place between the management and the union members and it has been presented here for your kind reference. Kindly have a look at it. Your Honor, this shows that how Mr. Shyamdas has been lying throughout and was trying to mislead us. You may go, Mr. Shyamdas. Your witness, please. My Lord, may I request Mr. Rash, the CEO of Still Carbide Private Limited, to come to the witness box again? Permission granted. Mr. Rash, come to the witness box. Mr. Raj, I agree that you suspended these workers on solid grounds. But tell me, was there an inquiry committee kept to look into this matter? It was not needed. It was clear that they are responsible for it. Very good. The complaint is yours, the verdict is yours, then why are we needed here? Do you realize that according to Section 10A of Standing Orders Act 1946, if there is any negligence, then you have to keep an inquiry committee. And till the inquiry continues, you have to give them the subsistence allowance? Miss Avni, again here, as your honor mentioned, when it comes to law, ignorance cannot be considered innocence. Thank you, Mr. Raj. Your witness, please. My lord, may I request Mr. Dushyan Singh to come to the witness box? Permission granted. Ram Ram. Is Mr. Dushan present? Please come to the witness box. Ram Ram. Raise your right hand. Do you promise that the testimony you shall give in the case before this court shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. Mr. Dushan, you are a candidate for the upcoming elections, right? Yes. Okay. What was the help that Mr. Shyamdas offered you? He told me he would get me support of his people and give me some money. But then why Mr. Shyamdas? He is a very powerful person and he can influence anyone in doing anything. And uh, he has a very bright political future. And I promised him if he get support of his people, and uh, he would help me in winning my election. Then I promise him that his political career would be set. Thank you, Mr. Dushyan. Your Honor, may I call upon Mr. Chandulal once again to the witness box? Permission granted. Mr. Chandulal, did Mr. Shyamdas ask for money from you all members apart from the membership fees? Yes. Did he charge above the membership fees or any other sort of contributions apart from the money collected? Huh. Yes. Apni Awas Naxi was published. Okay. Then tell me, what did he promise? I'm asking you, Mr. Chandulal. He said, if we uh, support Mr. Dushyant and give money, uh, our power, our managers would increase. Okay. My last question to you. Was this contribution made compulsory or was it just an option? No need to look at him. It was made compulsory. Thank you, Mr. Chandulal. Your Honor, it is clear from the above mentioned statements that the money contribution from the members was made compulsory and it is illegal to force the workers to pay for political purpose without consent and that too for a registered trade union. 
The main objective of Mr. Shyam Das was not the benefit of his union members, but it was just a plan made by him to trap the managers into what he wants and to gain the confidence of the other political leaders so that he could come up in the political front. This case of him is merely a way to gain the confidence and support of his union members in the disguise of their savior and finally emerge as a political leader. That's all, Your Honor. Does the prosecution have to say anything? Yes, Your Honor. I agree that Mr. Shamdas had political and personal objective. But what about the workers? They do not know anything about this. As we also, there was no inquiry committee. There was no subsistence allowance given to them. Your Honor, they are daily wage earners. They do not have any other source of income. They have certain rights and the management has certain duties. And they need to follow it according to the provisions of the law. That's all, Your Honor. The case discussed today was of sheer interest and importance. Before giving the verdict, as a responsible judicial officer, I would like to comment on a few things. In the lights of development that is happening in India, employees and employers are emerged as a powerful stakeholders of the society. The present case is a classic example of sheer irresponsibility of both the parties involved. It is a matter to be strictly said to employers and employees across India that with high-end development and industrial overload, adherence to industrial and labor laws have to be religiously done. Any lapse or even ignorance to the law can lead to a judge or not catastrophe like the one in the present case. The employer and the employee should come out of their myopic point of view of thinking about only profit and wages, but they have to behave as responsible citizens because their actions are proving to be infectious to other parts of the society. In the present case, the court penalized the organization for suspending the worker without conducting an inquiry. But putting up an inquiry committee under Section 25U of Unfair Labor Practice of Industrial Disputes Act 1947 and for not paying the subsistence allowance during the time of inquiry under Section 13 of Standards Order Act 1946. The court also orders Till Carbide Private Limited to put up on inquiry committee against the workers in question and submit the judgment whatsoever to the court. Also, the court criticizes and penalizes Mr. Shyamdas for conducting an illegal strike without giving a prior notice according to the provision of law under Section 22 and Section 26 of Industrial Disputes Act 1947 and for compelling the members of trade union to use the funds provided by them for political purpose and disqualifies Mr. Shyamdas as the union leader of Satyarth Union under Section 16 and under Section 21A of Trade Union Act 1926. Here, court dismissed.